Coming up next, a new episode of Nat Geo's Trafficked, hosted by Peabody award-winning journalist Mariana Von Zeller, where she goes deep underground to the super cool and glamorous world of American neo-Nazism, offering a never-before-seen platform to the hottest new trend taking the internet by storm. After that, enjoy a lighthearted, nostalgic look back on the 1960s and 70s with host James Mason and Nat Geo's latest documentary series, My Favorite Serial Killers, at 8. And then at 9, a fresh look on the causes of the Black Plague with another installment of Well Poisoners, hosted by the fourth dimensional mentor spirit of Ben Franklin. This is Nat Geo, and I guess this is the kind of stuff we do now. Empire never ended uh, with Fritz and Boris and Ray. Yo, hey. hey guys, how you feeling? I mean, okay. Oh, yeah. so you didn't watch the documentary? We're I did about watch today, it today, though. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I just finished it. It's. Uh, I didn't have high hopes. I, I rarely do for this kind of thing, but this was worse than I expected. Um, did my mic there's, a, there's a Ray. There's a Ray face going on here. Mm. Getting some Ray face in the video. Yeah. What's all this Ray face about? I don't know. I was. Uh, I don't know about uh, Rayface. I have to say. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a it's a horrible documentary about uh, about what I don't know. I guess about like siege build um, American Nazis. But is it about that? That's the question. Yeah, well, maybe, let's introduce uh, what, yeah, we're let's introduce talking what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what we're we got um, a tip off from a listener who sent us. Uh, this recent documentary from National Geographic from a series called Trafficked with Mariana Von Zeller, uh, which a, a show, a series that was about human trafficking, as far as I understand it. And then I guess now in season two, it's just about whatever the fuck they want to talk about. It's cutting edge journalism, things, Fritz. Cutting edge, deep journalism. Yes. She's a brave um, journalist that goes where no one so else brave. will go. So brave. Ukraine. So, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> So uh, it's called um, uh, Trafficked. I think it's called White Supremacy is the subtitle for this. And it is uh, just this like gift that National Geographic made for Nazis. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. They, it basically, it's a, it's a fucking Nazi propaganda video made by National Geographic, more or less. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what we're talking about today. Because we have to. It just it's an awful, awful thing. Like I said, I didn't have such high hopes for it. Uh, I don't know. I. I know, I remember watching in the past, like some other Nat Geo documentaries about a, like similar subjects. I think they did, um, they did that series on the National Socialist Movement, I think, back in like, I don't know, when was that? Like 2008 or nine or something. Um, okay. And it was also shitty, but less shitty than this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like that yeah. one, at least like, you know, they have, um, they show the March on DC and they show like people protesting against them and like kind of get that side of the story a little bit too although they fucked that up pretty epically as well but um this is just yeah it's surprisingly open to talk to like nazi shitheads without any kind of like really background on it at all so um, and also presenting them all in their best possible light like the way that they would want to be presented yeah you know? While Mariano Van Zeller like looks shocked and scandalized by the things they're saying, ah uh, yeah, it's yeah. among she, she's got this constant shocked and disapproving face. Uh, Although we'll, we'll, we'll definitely I mean, she's definitely that. into them because they will say those things. Like, and then of she's course. shocked. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like if an agent provocateur was a National Geographic documentary. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, so this thing opens up with some like clips uh, from mass shootings uh, in the recent years in America and like police chatter in the background and some like, you know, intense music. 
And she opens up by saying, uh, the world is under attack from a new kind of extremism. And then there's like a quick media collage of all these guys saying, lone wolf, lone wolf, lone wolf. Yeah. Um, and then says, nothing could be further from the truth. And that's the idea of the documentary is that it's out to prove that the lone wolf uh, gunman idea doesn't really exist. And in fact, what you have is like a, a large international network, not unlike ISIS. Right. Uh, or Al Qaeda. Basically, basically, she's taking the popular like internet chatter thing from you know the last ten years of like why don't we call white supremacist terrorism? This is terrorism. Call it what it is. It's terrorism. 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 That like we can deconstruct in you know our own way. It's problematic for a number of reasons too. The idea being what you want to give the FBI the authority to do like war on terror stuff. Yeah, like yeah. more extensively yeah, yeah. in the U.S. Like that sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, <clears throat> well, we'll talk about some of the people that she interviews in this yeah. as well that are very much part of that. But that's uh, that's essentially, I think, the stance of the show, right? Yes. They're taking a stand from the very beginning, and it's it's that you know we need to call this what it is. It's terrorism. Yeah, and also like this, like right away, like this, what Fritz said. They say at the beginning, like this new form of terrorism, which is like not, uh, like. White supremacy and Nazis are not new. I mean, it's no. literally the found, foundational aspect yes. of like the United States. <laughs> yes, which they yeah, com- yeah. completely ignore, and they don't have any kind of really. Uh, I mean, it's a horrible. Uh, like they even have like this professor, who who is like a black person, but he says something like how these people are intolerant of the other. You know, this whole theory of how they reject the other or something like this. But yeah. It's like, yeah. That's that's the way that you want to analyze this. Like this, like reminds me of this. Uh, like you know, like Joe Rogan and his stupid guests who always talk about. And Joe Rogan himself always insists on how you know tribalism is the problem. You know, people are so tribal, and yeah, it's like yeah. some human nature that we you know divide ourselves in. So this is like basically a way of saying like you know white supremacy or you know it's just like one form of this tribalism which is natural to people. And yes. like uh, like an extreme, a horrible way to analyze this. Yeah. 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 And there's also stuff that they say that's just like flat out untrue. Like one of the things that's at the very beginning of this, um, it says like the this huge international network is not putting guns in people's hands, but it's some kind of new extremism. Also, like that's fundamentally untrue. Like there we've we've covered people that were arrested over and over again for weapons manufacture, weapons distribution. I mean, like, uh, the movement of weapons around is definitely part of this. Uh, since at least the 30s, by the way. Like, yeah. <laughs> what's new here, you know? Um, so anyway, the host, the host uh, gets on a train to Chicago. It shows Mariana looking very pensively. She's always looking pensive and worried all the time. E- everywhere she is, she's in, like, a hot zone, you know? She's looking pensively out the train window on the L and then she's looking pensively under the L train. And then uh, she finally meets up with um, Christian uh, Picciolini, who probably a lot of people might know. Uh, he's this ex, um, ex uh, like Hammerskin skin. guy. Uh, he was part of the Chicago area skinheads and like I think the late 80s even. It was, seems like he was there pretty early. Um, but, uh, he was talking, he's talking to Mariana and she's trying to like supposedly get a sense for like, why do people do this? Why do they become fascists? And, and her deep questions are things like, what's the final solution? As though yeah. she's never heard this before, you know, um, because like, he had clearly, a banned final solution and he, then he, yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, what's the, and then she, he has to explain, well, that's, you know, the Holocaust. The, yeah. and, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She's really coming in with nothing here um and then she's like oh dear that's so horrible yeah 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 yeah. and yeah and then it cuts to her watching fucking the video footage of the christchurch shooting and as she's watching like 50 something people getting murdered she's just sitting there like shaking her head in disapproval you know like Mm. like watching like a kid break the rules in class you know just Mm. oh and it's the same disapproving look she later gives when she watches the january 6 um yeah capital thing it's the yeah, same yeah, yeah. face like yeah. she's watching a video of <laughs> yeah. 50 something people being murdered in real time from a first person perspective and she has the exact same expression as she does when she sees like a bunch of rednecks you know vandalizing like uh, nancy <laughs> yes. pelosi's office yeah. oh <laughs> it's all the same it's all so bad <laughs> so she mentions that the el paso shooter was inspired by the new zealand shooter 
um, we talked a little bit about actually the a very little bit about the Christchurch stuff with um, our friends Cam and Andy, by the way, mm, yeah. on their show Yana Pasaran, where we talked about the supposed overblown kind of Slavic connection there. Um, but the the most fucked up thing here is that, uh, and this is something she'll do throughout the documentary. Uh, she shows like the Great Replacement on her laptop screen, you know, like the um, this sort of stylized edition scrolls through it with the super tense music, you know, and then shows like a bunch of stylized excerpts from the text, you know, with the, and these excerpts are, are chosen to be the ones that are most kind of direct and dark, you know, and like uh, terroristic. But like, have you guys read The, the Great yeah, Replacement? Yeah. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. Like one thing that uh, the overriding feeling of it is that it was written by like a like a 13 year old who sits by himself at lunch. You know, that's like the stuff. It's like got meme culture shit in there. It's got just like almost funny nonsense in it. And any of that could have been exerted, you know, excerpted, yeah. excerpted, made into an excerpt. You got it. You got what I'm yes. saying? Yeah. yeah. But, in, but what they choose, obviously, is like the cool stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's it, everything about it is made to look cool. And then all they say about it critically is um, something how, oh, this has been the, the great replacement idea has been debunked over and over again for centuries or something like that. But that's it. There's there's no analysis of what the argument is, where it came from or or why it's wrong. You know, right. And um, it does because it doesn't matter. The point is to build this image of like a highly organized new ISIS kind of thing. And um, so. She goes to D.C. to talk to uh, Molly Saltzkog, who is a senior intelligence analyst at the Sufan Group, which is a group that is run by Ali Sufan, who is a former uh, FBI supervisory special agent who once won the Respect for Law Enforcement Award, by mm. the way. Uh, Sufan Group, they say this about themselves. This is their own description. This, this is who uh, Mariana here, the host, is interviewing Molly from this group. Um, they write, we are a global intelligence and security consultancy that helps clients in the public and private sectors enhance their abilities to identify, assess, and respond to high-risk environments and opportunities, enabling the formulation and execution of effective strategy and practices. They say among their many things that they advise a Southern European government how to address its growing migrant population and its accompanying terrorist threat. Oh, so nice. I'm sure they had nothing to do <laughs> with white nationalism in Southern in Europe. Nice. Um, so, yeah, and in, in a 2006, so apparently this guy, uh, Ali Sufan, who started this thing, got some press for being like critical of the CIA after September 11th, um, mm -hmm. saying that they're all fucked up about intelligence and they just leave boxes everywhere, which is probably all true. But he is, I think, probably should be more well known for the arrest Wait, of this so he, guy. He, he criticized CIA for not being serious enough or what? For, yeah, for, for not knowing, yeah, for not doing intelligence sharing. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a big deal for them. I mean, basically, the Sufan Group is a private intelligence organization, mm. you know, and mm. a lot of what they, they really rally behind is intelligence sharing. And anytime somebody says intelligence sharing, they write an article. But that's not possible. That like, it's not possible to have, like, if they're a public private intelligence agency, that means that they are in some way a part of the CIA. I mean, there's no way that, like, I, okay, maybe I'm paranoid, but I, I don't think I am. Would something like CIA allow for an actual private intelligence? intelligence agency to operate there independently of them no no yeah i'm sure know. there's crossover i mean yeah they like I mean, they like contracting uh, the u.s mm -hmm. government in particular likes contracting private uh like security companies of various different kinds to do things that uh you know they yeah. either don't want to do or you know they think that well, the mm -hmm. private guys can do it better i mean um like, you know, Blackwater or anything like that, if you're talking about, like, combat, but they do it for intelligence as well. Yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, formally Which they are. But obviously, they're, like, there's, yeah. there's a yeah. tremendous amount of crossover. Yeah. Well, these guys also work a lot for private companies. And that's mm. what I noticed also um, with uh, our friend who comes later in the show, uh, who Ray already mentioned. He also works for one of these, like, security and intelligence private companies that do work for other private companies. Um, so, uh, so basically, this guy, Ali Sufan, who, who Molly is uh, the employee of, got, was, was, a, <laughs> was like, okay, here's, here's a story about Ali. So Ali um, was responsible for the arrest of a guy named Rafik Sabir, 
who was the um who was like uh, I guess a doctor, basically, I think living in New York at the time. So this guy, Rafik Sabir, he, he was living in New York. He'd paid off uh, his like $75,000 medical school debt, like working it off, you know, like he had this um, uh, like white American common law wife. Like this is, you know what I mean? Like this guy is like a citizen, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and uh, so Ali uh, gets this guy's name from another dude named Shah who had been interrogated or whatever, who was himself like a jazz musician um, who had agreed to provide training to Iraqi insurgents. But ha- like the conditions of that confession are very suspicious. But but uh, the arrest of his of Sabir, I think, explains a lot about them. So so what this guy um, Ali Sufan did was go to Rafiq Sabir pretending to be uh, an Al Qaeda operative and uh, asks Sabir if he'd be willing to set up medical care for injured fighters coming in. And Sabir agrees, resulting in his arrest on, on, uh, in 2005. So later, though, Sabir in trial claimed that um, he, he doesn't actually really speak Arabic. Sabir didn't grow up speaking Arabic. He spent like two months in Saudi Arabia uh, ever and didn't speak the language like... Uh, and also, and also, Sufan apparently has a very strong accent in Arabic. On top of that, that makes it difficult to understand. And so, apparently, what Sufan did was have Shah and Sabir swear a uh, bayat together, swear the oath of loyalty to Al Qaeda together. Um, the, apparently, Sufan read a statement, asked Sabir to repeat it. Sabir, not really being an Arabic speaker, repeated this, and then um, finally, uh, and they demonstrated this in court that Sufan's like Arabic was shitty and you couldn't really understand things like when he said Al-Qaeda, it didn't sound like a word, Mm -hmm. you know, it was very poorly done. And uh, but the federal prosecutor argued that like since Sabir had lived in Saudi Arabia for like a couple months, he must be fluent in Arabic. Plus, he was a legal firearms owner. And so uh, this fucking got this guy um, sent up. And then also the other big thing that Sufan did was uh, get Osama bin Laden's driver sent to Guantanamo, another kind of like more or less normal guy. There's even a documentary about this guy's like fucking struggles, you know, Mm. (laughs) like how he ended up getting into this position. So Sufan testifies at a military tribunal that this guy, Osama bin Laden's driver, his name is Hamdan, was uh, a, 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 quote, hardened terrorist with advanced knowledge of September 11th attacks. Uh, This driver none of that is true was acquitted on all charges was let go there's a documentary about him and all of this so that's that's the guy so a great uh, guy from like the dark chapters of the bush administration yes that's and, who and yes the war, early war on terror wonderful so that's who molly works for you know so i looked up also what molly wrote um herself like what she got involved in and um she uh writes a lot about how like biden's commitment to sharing is really great and also mentions uh, this. Um, this is something that Molly wrote. She's talking about the, this document, the security strategy for domestic terrorism that the Biden administration released. She says, the authors of this document should be credited for going to great lengths to emphasize as a strategy, it should remain agnostic to the types of ideology motivating violence while also seeking to understand these ideologies, whether far left, far right, Islamist or otherwise. And the only one of those things far left far right islamist or otherwise that has a link is far left uh-huh. if you click on it it takes you to an article about anti-fascists oh wonderful. Um, yes the article itself says no anti-fascists are not terrorists but whatever it's it's also a very kind of liberal take on it um but uh yeah that's the uh that's molly here so so molly tells mariana that um these like white supremacists are sharing al-qaeda manuals with each other and then the host and the editors all think it's a really good idea to show the title and author of an explosives handbook <laughs> you know <laughs> like uh on her laptop screen um this is what i mean it's like they're uh, really it's like if a documentary was an agent provocateur you know <laughs> like here's the great replacement with the author here's uh, an explosives handbook with the author easy to find online uh, I mean, not like you couldn't find this stuff anyway, but I mean, it's there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're I mean, I, I'd even give some of that a pass. Maybe if you're, you know, just visual communication is, you know, you have to select images that you think are, you know, important or whatever. Yeah, I see that. I understand. But that. yeah, it's still 
it's sensationalist. And the whole vibe, like there's this throughout the whole thing is this kind of like flashes and dramatic music and this and that. Yeah. So of course they, you know, show that shit. I think that, like somewhere while she's talking to Molly, although I'm not sure completely, there, there she mentioned something Mariana does, how it's hard for people to believe in a country that was started by white people. Right. That, Founded by white people. Yeah. The, the country. The, the, yeah. The, the, the white supremacists are now the main uh, terrorist threat or something like this. Which is like, so So she states that the country was founded by white people, which is Not like... Not the government. <clears throat> yeah, the well, I mean, if you can say, okay, the state was definitely founded by, and I would say, like, obviously white supremacists, because, like, you cannot... Yeah. That's the point that she was supposed to make. Like, the country right. was... Yeah. The state was founded by slave owners, which is like, yes. you can't get more white supremacy than that. Yeah. And yes. uh, so that's the problem. Like, and yes. not like the the uh, the country like was built basically by white people you know which that's, is like what nazis say yeah like well, that's, yes you know, so, yes so i mean su such a horrible like and i don't believe that like these like choices are like uh, co coincidental like you know it's like uh, it, yeah yeah i think mm. by the time we get through the end of this we're gonna have to step back and look at the whole thing mm. as an object um yeah because i i have that same feeling well i uh, mean my my first impression is like imagine having like the budget and resources that this this like show has right. and then making yes. this piece of shit with it yes like, of course <laughs> that too but that's also you know, why it feels because like yeah it's not none of it's yeah none of it's accidental i mean there's you know it's just yeah. nat geo it's well produced there's a lot of yes. money there like they have not access just, like, to stuff that we will never have access yeah this to. isn't like us that like, I would kill to have together shit to. like you know well mostly yeah. money yeah yeah well yeah i mean money is yes that's a big part of it yeah, and just on that point, I think also the implication is like a, about the white people founding the country thing that um like ooh, the implication is that white because people are white, this will surprise them. You know what I mean? Mm. Like which which is I think a very subtle kind of already sort of a racialist logic, you know, that is like white people have a political mm. kind of outlook, which I is mean, also Yeah, I mean like the kind like Okay, the the state is an oppressive apparatus was obviously started by white supremacists. So you can say that's our heritage, and this is why uh, it's hard to now accept as those kinds of people as some kind of threat because they basically started the the state. That I mean, would be different. So be that's, much different. that's like yeah. something. And I'm saying like the country was founded by white people. That's like kind of a white supremacist way and that's to think why. to say. Like because we can't like see this stuff. That that uh -huh. basically means it was built by white people, which is like what Nazis say, and which is totally yes. untrue. Uh, yes, so yes, yes. that's I mean, okay, I'm uh, stating obvious things, of course, but that's because you know this. That's because you need uh, to explain it because this fucking yes. documentary yeah. is garbage. Yes, yes it is. Uh, so then we get introduced to Errol Southers, who is uh, the only like I think the only black speaker on the entire show. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, he's also a former FBI special agent. And he's also now employed by a private security company called TAL. Although they seem to focus on like doing bodyguard stuff and risk assessment for like rich people traveling abroad, mm -hmm. you know, like in Brazil and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, they but uh, I mean, whatever. It's, it's nothing really remarkable. I don't think about that interaction except what Ray already mentioned. Um, but uh, about it being like only an other thing you yeah, know, that's where the argument comes from yeah yeah uh but i think one of the highlights here though comes right now when suddenly mariana is in a room with james fucking mason yeah, oh for a God. minute yeah. you know so it's not when the when the real interview happens but we see that it's gonna happen uh and james mason right off the bat wearing a full suit yeah. you know <laughs> looking like super happy to be there rosy cheeked unfurling his like nazi flag you know for the nsl i think you shit. actually even hear him before uh before you see him i think if i'm not mistaken you hear like yeah where all i'm like oh god it's That's james right. mason oh god it's mason <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 exactly he actually yeah. brought a, a like an a and p flag an old one because yeah. it has the oh that was the a and p flag because okay. it has like the like the earth in the center of the swastika uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Which is like that was like a rock wall thing. Everybody uh, brought props to this. Yeah, yeah. They must have told them like bring your favorite things. Yeah, <laughs> so, like show know. and tell with 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 it's show and tell. Show and Nazis. tell with James Mason. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, because, so uh, they they present James Mason right when she starts the interview, and like you know she's like he's been part of the 
white nationalist movement for over 50 years. And that's about it. That's all they tell you about James Mason. And that he wrote Siege and that it's, you know, that blah, blah, blah. The basics, like, you know, got rediscovered by Adam Waffen and shit like that. No mention that, like, you know, he's a pedophile. uh, No mention of the ANP. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. Very little background. So, like, you just know that he's a Nazi that wrote this book. No mention that he admires serial killers. That yeah. you know that the only reason why he was in prison was because of child porn and having like fights with teenagers, <laughs> yes. like, which is like what you would say like if you want yes. to explain who this person is. Mm. Yeah, if you yeah. and like yes. discredit him as a speaker. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. which is, which is very easy presenting to these kind of people. You know, I mean, you shouldn't yeah. talk to him at all in, or interview him. But if no. you did that, like which you shouldn't do, then you should say that. Like, yeah, yes. There's so, so many things I would I would love to see Mason confronted with on a live interview. It would be hilarious to see um, and do some damage, I think. But they, they really don't want to do any of that. Um, in fact, right before they show Mason, they do they show this like kind of like, um, you know, vaporwave siege propaganda reel, basically, uh, where they show like a few minutes of things that have been banned everywhere else except for National Geographic, apparently. And uh, and then it flips over before we get back to Mason uh, with uh, this fucking National Socialist Order idiot, uh, also in Colorado, I guess uh, one of Mason's buddies, in full fucking costume with all his favorite toys, also like yeah. a knife and sh- a gun and siege like mask that. with the Nazi I mean, armband. Yeah. And he looks like like a, a member of a, like a death squad from uh, the Iron Gates or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Except also with a bit of a marshmallow man vibe to him. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So he's a, like a representative of the National Socialist Order, which is Atomwaffen Division after yeah. it changed yeah. its name. So yes. his name. They introduce him as Arthur, yeah, twenty-eight-year-old salesman, which I I think is just. I mean, maybe it's a death of a salesman reference. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somebody knows who this is and they could hit us up. You know, I'm curious. But this no. guy seems like a complete fucking idiot to me, and I would be really surprised if he wasn't doxed between that interview and now. I mean, the. He's uh he's not a smart man. So the the host like asks him um about uh, the New Zealand shooter and he says some dumb internet troll comments like uh the only thing he did wrong is that he didn't kill more and the host is like that's horrific. <gasps> like how could you instead of saying like who hurt you? Or again like what did you expect when you're interviewing like an Adam Waffen dude? Yeah. But yeah, it's set up is... like so that like she seems shocked. The, Clearly well, she asks exactly... questions she knows she asks the questions she knows he's going to say something shocking about. Yeah. She asks like I mean, exactly the whole the whole questions. point of Atomwaffen is to say things like that. Like yes, they have yes. to say that. Like and and I also mean, their propaganda videos and also their costumes and then she shows his propaganda video like in full. You yeah. know, um, free. It's fucking free uh, airtime for these idiots. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I mean, she did the same thing with Mason, too, you know, like uh, he, Mason gave some line about like how I, I don't think picking proper targets is even considered murder or something like this. You know, mm. and she does the usual like disapproving <gasps> head shake. Mm. <laughs> yes. Uh, God damn. Like anyone who's done a minute of research on Mason would know these triggers, you know, like these are lines you're expecting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, they also she also doesn't explain exactly what Atomwaffen is. Uh, no. th- their connections to bizarre, horrible shit that they have, which is like what you know, like you have to know uh, if you know anything about them, you will know about these things. Yeah. So like yeah. They, they basically present both Mason and Atomwaffen now NSO in the best possible light. Yes, they it's hard core, hard these and kind terrorists. of people. Yeah. 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 Just exactly, exactly how they want to be portrayed. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yes. That's that's is... and that's the like theme throughout this. Like at least for me, is that like. Every time they show somebody, it's it's on their terms, right? It's absolutely right. They yeah, completely allow them to present themselves as what they imagine themselves to be. So this like national socialist order dude, who's probably a fucking loser, like yes. gets to show up in his like you know siege mask and his little costume and like seem hard and yes. you know. All I mean, that. he's obviously a fucking idiot, and she could have fucked with him. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it would have been easy to get him to say shit. Yeah. That would have been like probably useful and also damning and make them look like idiots, you know? Yeah. But uh, instead, no, it's all got to be like, you're a hard and terrifying terrorist. And that's that's the way it goes. It's not like these people aren't fucking terrorists. It's just like, I mean, we've gone over this like a million story, times you know? on our show. <laughs> like these, you know, like, for example, 
09A guys love to be portrayed, you know, as like dangerous. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they are, but yeah. like it, you know, just presenting them as that kind of works in their favor. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly right. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 It's really bad. It's really funny that they just fucking interview private security consultants. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> There's not a single anti-fascist voice in this. There's well, like, 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 you know, even like an expert on the far right, like that, you know, could be like a liberal or something. They don't even bring those dude, guys in. They it's just, like, like the Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah, Why not? Yeah, yeah. They, they're literally, this is what they do. It's like, like yeah, where let, are they? Let's talk to these like uh, guys that spent most of their career, like get mowing innocent people. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. What the fuck? Amazing. Yeah. Well, speaking of Gitmo, um, they they start at this point after interviewing the NSO guy, uh, start dropping in ISIS footage now, mm. I think for the first time and sort of mix it in with Adam and training videos, you know, and uh, like, yeah, there are some like surface level similarities. But I mean, you know, I mean, these are not uh, these you really ISIS should not was, complete these like far more serious ISIS ran a state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, there's really no comparison um, except for these very superficial ways, like just whatever, maybe the way they approach media. Is well, because vaguely cause again, it, yeah. it's to show the point that, you know, to conflate the two and to be like, this is terrorism. These people are just like ISIS, but they're white people. They live next to you yeah. in Colorado or whatever. Yes. Well, there's maybe some like a horrible way to compare, a horrible in sense of like, maybe like what possibly is coming. But like some of these Islamist groups were also kind of in the beginning, almost non-existent in reality, including Al-Qaeda, until they were kind of their existence was more or less propagated by the U.S. Yeah. government. Yeah. And uh, yeah. after which they actually became a real thing. Yeah. Yes. So and there's a lot of that point. in the second section, too. Of the, that's a, yeah, know, let's film. get yeah. there. I mean, that's like, that could have been, I mean, that should have been the main point of the next section, which is about Ukraine. Yeah. Like, um, so like, uh, yeah, so it starts off with Mason saying how proud he is that some of his boys came back from Ukraine, you know, ready to fight and shit like that. Oh, that so was a funny part, actually, when she's like, can you give me their names? And he's like, I can, but I won't. <laughs> oh my God. He gives her that fucking like fucking dad. Face, he's like, are you, you know? crazy? Like, <laughs> laying down the rules of the house sometimes, you know, um, God, I hate him. Do you think that's like James Mason's house or that like he like, I don't know. Ask no, them to film somewhere else because, like, you know, yeah. his place. Is they took him out of the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. I know how his house looks. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we all know how his house looks. <laughs> yeah. It's the A and P style of decorating. Yeah, like yeah. pictures of Charles Manson, like empty beer and bottles just, like, everywhere, and garbage shit. everywhere. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so she goes to Ukraine. She says, "I traveled six thousand miles to Eastern Europe to see if I could understand." Oh my god! Yeah, why the Eastern Europe reference? That's like, uh, oh yeah, it god. reminded me of the scene from like Euro Trip where like they end up in like Slovakia or something. Dear sweet mother of God. We're in Eastern Europe. And then it like cuts to like just poverty. This is that, yes. but like again, the the images that they selected are fucking fantastic. Cause so like, you know, they show all the like the Soviet, like, you know, the statue of Mother Ukraine in Kiev. and the yeah, yeah, sickles and hammers and stuff. And it's like, how is that relevant to this? Yeah, mm. it's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I mean, it could be you know, if this like, was a much, much, much better documentary, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, but that's kind of no, like, you just... know, the, the scary, like, so ex-Soviet state, Soviets, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Kind it's of like shit. when they were like in the US, they were like, sh they would show like, uh, like footage of like Statue of Liberty or. Yeah, George like, Washington. The White House like and George Washington and, <laughs> yeah. like, and Nixon and Bush and something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then comes one of the fucking most surreal interviews um, with, uh, I think his name is Alexander Sachkov. Yeah. Um, who's this like really strange kind of like troll looking uh, Russian f uh, f volunteer in Ukraine. Like, a, yeah. I guess he was just Azov. Yeah. yeah. So which is like very uh, telling, you know, because like I understood this, like the commentary being about American white supremacists. And then yes. they go to Ukraine. Okay, you should. We should talk about Ukraine, of course. But like, yeah, it maybe really like, fits into the American story pretty well. The, yeah, and then and then they find a Russian guy there to interview. Yeah, which yeah. is like okay, a lot of Russian Nazis support the Ukrainian side in the war there. 
but like I think it's pretty like it's not a coincidence that they found a Russian guy to right. interview in Ukraine, you know. Yeah. And like and to imply some I mean the whole thing like implies somehow that this is you know, white supremacy is imported uh from Rush the Russian part of the world, you know. Yeah. It's that it's that trick. It's that like um mm. I mean I don't want to shit talk Adam Curtis at all. I'm I'm a fan, but it is mm. that kind of similar trick where you just juxtapose yeah, yeah. images and videos together, you know, yeah. to create a sense that they're connected. Um Al- yeah. al- although the guy was the, he was arrested for distributing the the New Zealander like right. sh- mass shooter uh manifesto. Like so he, I mean it obviously is going in the opposite direction, like if anything right. you could say. Yeah. You know. Yes. And their their yes. explanation of like the far right in Ukraine too is is pretty hilarious. So like, you know, it, they show all these like, oh, scary Eastern Europe, uh scary Nazis, like this is what, you know, America could be if we let these guys run loose. Like, look at all these people that they have and like I'm gonna go find out what's going on. And so she basically says that, you know, when the war in Ukraine started, uh, you know, these guys wanted to fight. And so the Ukrainian government made a deal with the devil just to protect themselves. Uh And that's it. That's why there's Nazis in Ukraine. Nothing Mm -hmm. kind of more than that. You know, like, oh, the government made a mistake. It shouldn't have, you know, made this deal with them. But what could they do? They're being invaded by Russia and like, whatever, whatever. Maybe you know, a little bit of background on the history of, you know, Ukrainian nationalism or, or the fact that like, you know, a lot of these, you know, Ukrainian Nazis that came back after the fall of the Soviet Union came back from, you know, living comfortable lives in the United States where uh-huh. they were openly able to be Nazis, like that, like Runvira temple in New Jersey or whatever. That's like a literal neo-Nazi pagan temple that was founded, like Ukrainian one that was founded in like, you know, the fifties in, in the U.S., you know, like, <laughs> like, so like the idea that like, I mean, this is just like an accident and not like part of, you know, America's ant- promotion of anti-communism for, you know, forever <laughs> is, is hilarious to me. Well, not to mention she could just point out, I mean, like, why not point out, I mean, I know why, but I mean, one of these fucking Ukrainian neo-Nazis uh, was, was, it was received by fucking John McCain and Paul Ryan, like personally right. with big fanfare in 2017, you know, and like from like George W. Bush through Obama, through Trump, there's been like a nonstop support of these like neo-Nazi elements in Ukraine. I mean, this is also an American story. Uh, yeah. Amazing. But instead it's like, you know, Americans are going there to be trained by these like scary Nazis, by these foreigners. Yeah, and this is like in. a common problem that I mean I bring this up a lot, but like this idea that like um, you know these countries in which that have like a you know large far right that somehow they're importing their ideologies to the U.S. instead of it being the other way around. Like you know uh-huh. skinhead culture doesn't start in Ukraine, it doesn't start in you know Russia, it starts in the right. U.K. and like you know you know the when that shit started to become popular, like in the nineties and shit, you know, all those like Eastern European Nazis were like flying Confederate flags and like doing shit that comes directly from the U S and we talk about it over and over again. Like there wouldn't be a global white supremacy movement if it wasn't for the United States and like how powerful and rich all those organizations are compared to like anything that you can find anywhere else in the world. I mean, we've talked about all the like millionaires that like bankrolled, you know, all of these like neo-Nazi organizations like from you know back in the day till now you know what i mean that yeah it's not an accident you know yeah and so like yeah of course when you promote this kind of like not anti-communist nationalism in all these countries that have like really big problems yeah you're gonna have a flourishing of the far right but a far right that in many ways is just copy pasted from the west and then adapted for its own purposes you know for its own country circumstances yeah i look i mean what really burns me about this whole thing is that every time she goes to a new country she's there to find out why but is that question ever even attempted no like to be asked or answered ever it's not like uh there's no real investigation here of any kind yeah Uh, instead of like like any kind of real investigation it's like hey let's talk to these nazis and let hey let's make propaganda videos for all of them (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah which takes us to one of the most like just bald-faced 
propaganda videos of this whole documentary, which was uh, with this uh, complete asshole from California who a lot of our listeners might be familiar with named Rob Rundo. He's not from, the, he's from New York. Sorry. Yeah. He just, he got famous in California. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. That's right. He's obviously from New York. Yes. Nobody talks like that yeah. <laughs> on the West coast. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, dude, um, I don't know if you don't know who this guy is. He, I guess, um, well, I don't know what can you say about him. He's he's like a fucking street fighter dude, uh, involved in some like Nazi MMA stuff. Um, kind of he's made the a name guy for behind himself. the the Rise Above movement. Um, yeah, youth youth and fitness and that kind of stuff, and trying to look normal. That yeah, sort of thing. Uh, he uh, he. Thing. The Rise Above movement does take a lot of tips from like Euro Nazis. Like they they like dressing kind of like that. Their whole goal is to basically be like cool hip like nazis that you know emphasize you know athleticism and right you know who don't, yeah. who don't call like themselves that. nazis yeah like, also um, white nationalists yeah, white nationalists you know they make streetwear and like yeah. you know it's right. they're they're like culture not, thugs and yeah. like you know that kind of shit they're um, like not openly like pro-terrorist like Atomwaffen, and they don't they're not so open about their nazi stuff and uh and he he was also participating in Charlottesville, i think yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. They're in Charlottesville. Yeah. I mean, then the the Huntington Beach uh, yeah. incident uh, with them, uh, after which he, you know, fled the country, ended up in right. in Central America for a while, got deported back to the U.S., and since then has lived was in Ukraine, bouncing around Europe a little bit. Now is in Serbia, got deported from Serbia, apparently back. Um, kind of a whole mess. But I mean, they they promote like this, yeah, like cool guy imagery you know whatever like white lads aesthetics and shit like that yeah like, there you go um i mean that's mm-hmm. that's their own words i you know if you look at their telegram we don't really have time to go super into the Razba movement now i mean like we i'm sure we can talk about that some there's, other time. there's tons of shit online it's not hard to online. find i mean yeah. it's a big presence yeah but again uh, they allow but- him to present himself in his like using his narrative completely and she parrots his narrative in, she says in every way like visually yeah, too like he grew up on like in a you know rough working class part of new york city and like yeah. was in a gang which like okay i mean but that's how he presents himself and has always presented himself to journalists i mean it doesn't take like that much digging to you know find out more about him or like you know yes he has like an estranged father who's like a suburban artist in long island who does like you know, mm-hmm. portraits of like Barack Obama and shit. Like, <laughs> like it, it, this, <laughs> that like narrative that uh-huh. she presents is the one that he puts out there, which is like, I'm a, you know, he, he speaks with like a New York accent. It's like real obnoxious. Like kind of, I'm a tough guy from New York. Yeah. Tough guy thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, you know, you don't need to present him that way. <laughs> you just don't No. <laughs> uh, you know what? And also like, yeah. Okay. So this, the documentary presents him, introduces him first in some kind of um, a boxing training match with some partner in an empty stadium like it, uh, like jogging up the stairs like rocky like they make him look like just like he wants to be seen exactly like yeah, he's rocky like, he's like uh, he's jogging up guy. the stairs i mean that's yes, like yes. Um, and i actually know for a fact because like i've followed ram stuff online for a while that like they use that exact same footage because they had their dude there with like a DSLR uh-huh. filming that too. They use that same footage in, in media to rise. His like his what he said himself. His goal is to make like Vice News for Nazis, right? And like they use that exact same footage that then these motherfuckers put in this in this fucking documentary. Yes. Oh, like their yeah. Footage. And did you notice like also how okay? So they're taking the I guess Rundo's taking Mariana around Belgrade and showing her some graffiti, which to me really looked like almost wet graffiti <laughs> like it looked fucking oh, it fresh. clearly fresh and, like done yeah, for that done for this exact documentary i mean because it's like, rem graffiti in serbia like you know it's it's not like you know serbian people didn't go make that he did he did that and then did it so that he could bring this journalist there and show it to them yes. like you know so they get like a free propaganda video out yeah. of it i mean it's amazing so like this documentary goes somewhere goes to serbia and by being there you end up with like Nazi stickers and graffiti on the wall. Yeah, you see, like, see him like putting stickers <laughs> up in broad daylight and stuff. Come on, how do you not? This is a, isn't this a sign to stop? Like, isn't that a red flag for you, Mariana? That like this person's making Nazi murals for you? Yes. <laughs> like, doesn't like, that worry? I, you? Like, I want to know how they like how like the you know the producers like 
plan their day with him. You know, when they were like, yeah. okay, so we're going to come, we're going to, you tell us where to meet you and then we'll take a walk together and you can just show us what you do, you know, do your little Nazi thing and we'll just film you. Maybe you can beat yeah. some Roma people somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe just <laughs> yeah. your ordinary day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Terrible. Absolutely. This is exactly what you should not do. This documentary is like it was a so infuriating. example of like, what not to do. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and also there are just other like, like the internal logic of it makes no sense because after this rundo bit, they're saying like, okay, this is the new style that the Nazis are doing. Like this is now what they're doing because of Charlottesville. They say after Charlottesville, uh, you can't be an open Nazi anymore and you have to be like this rundo type. But first of all, rundo was in Charlottesville. Charlottesville yeah. Second of all, like all of the mass shootings that they showed happened after Charlottesville. So like... It, it, on its face the thesis is incorrect you know but uh, i mean i see the point i take the point you know that you that there is you, okay like people like rondo are definitely out there and she goes to the proud boys next as some sort of not nazi nazi group you know fair and all this but uh as they're talking about enrique tario right as they're talking about him with the fucking fbi guy who calls him their one not white guy because he has to stick with it being simply about otherness uh kind of buries the headline about tario don't you think yeah especially since he the guy himself is fbi no one in the documentary mentions uh tario's fbi connections as, as an informant nobody yeah um in this documentary and then of course it jumps to january 6th where also fbi involvement is completely unmentioned yeah. Um, or that one of the leaders of the Atomwaffen was an FBI. I mean, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I guess I'm not sure this that was out. Yeah, that was definitely out by the time this they were making this. Uh, well, I, I'm guessing that this was made um, filmed in 2020. Um, right. Rondo was deported from uh, Serbia in, in um, the beginning of 2021. Right. So, and this is like in this. It's obviously like summertime. So okay. I'm guessing that this was filmed in at least but those when, parts. When was it published? No. Now. Oh, just yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that I mean, they had seems, time. Like, they, yeah. seems like a yeah. relevant thing to add. Like, yeah, yeah. You can edit them. in. A, yeah. You know, there's a shit ton of stuff here. You could have edited out and put that in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's yeah, plenty. No, I, if you want, Nat Geo, I'd be happy to give some recommendations. I'd say, like, from minute one to minute 45, that can just go. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, we'll just help you do the rest. And then let's add, like, that. all of these people who work for the FBI. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That should be the first thing you say. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and let me get right. let me get that budget and like some fun drones to play around with so I can get like, you know, scary footage yeah, yeah. of sickles and hammers and, you know, yeah, let yeah. us do the rest. Just give us all that. We'll money, do it. We'll fact, do it. And we'll Hit make, us up. We'll make our version of this piece of shit fucking documentary. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Again. Um, and then I guess they, they let the whole thing end as I think James would have liked with uh, James Mason. Uh, doing some usual shtick, you know, and um, making that like dad disapproving dad face at her or like not disapproving dad. It's like the it's like a dad that like says something unpopular, you know, Yeah. like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he that's all he does. So but he I can't describe the look. It's, it's a look. It's, yeah. you, do you know what the look I'm talking about? It's just like raised eyebrows. Like, unfortunately, her, like we've like, we've that's seen the law. deal with it. That's yeah. just what it is. That face. We've seen a lot more of James Mason than most people have. I think so. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it, it's something that it's a look that we understand, and, and maybe the average person shouldn't. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, oh, like, right. I know that like a ton of people after this are like looking up James Mason, like watching him on like Bit Shoot or whatever. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is great for James. This is great for for Ram. This has been great for like fucking all these motherfuckers. The Rundo part is literally that part pissed it's me straight off. Kind up of fucking the most propaganda cause, film because they are. That's exactly how they want to be portrayed. Every yeah. single thing that they showed there is like how rondo presents himself on like his telegram channel it's oh that. yeah i like this documentary is going to be all over fucking telegram yeah, i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody on this is so proud of this documentary well any of them like james mason yeah national yes. socialist order rondo yeah. they all probably like how they appear in this film of course yeah. absolutely which is yeah. not what you want to do if you're like, <laughs> against yes. them like but yeah I, really it seems How like not a simple task to do but obviously and the january 6th thing was fucking stupid too uh god yes it, it was just like you know the the 
standard kind of liberal thing about like this was a wake up call for like you know, political after turmoil showing multiple in America, mass like, shootings, yeah. <laughs> like what things that are far mean? worse than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, they trampled on our principles. <laughs> You're trampling on fucking any kind of principles of human decency by like interviewing James Mason and putting the fucking television. Yeah, my God, Fucking, as he wants to be, uh, like at, on his own terms, and, incredible. Yeah, and Mariana often like she she kind of starts by talking uh, about them as white uh, su- supremacists, but then she often often really slips into labeling them as extremists, just extremists, yes. yeah. like right. not even right wing or anything. Which that's is right. like, I mean, that's you you know where this thing is going when they start start talking like that and it's very yeah. like it's very telling that what you mentioned about the person that she interviews molly from the not cia who, <laughs> yeah. who, 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 who <laughs> writes about you know left or right extremism or islamic and so on so that me that's basically that already you know uh it's uh building a framework uh like for repression of all kind yeah. of people who are critical of, you know, the state or uh, the, whatever yeah. you want. So, yeah. yeah. And this I mean, is written for security and intelligence yeah. Uh, yeah. funding, really. Yes. Yeah. Because we know, I mean, we've talked about this on the show a lot, you know, the FBI, what it does best is set people up for shit that isn't real and mm. then not deal with any of the real shit. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Look, and, I'm telling and, you. This is going to send a lot more informants the FBI's way. That's for sure. I mean, yeah, this really makes them all look cool. What the fuck, mm. guys? I mean, this is why I'm thinking like, <laughs> I mean, it really makes me get uh, conspiratorial. It really, really does. I mean, the whole thing is just fucking security consultants, ex feds. Like, I mean, but it's not conspiratorial. That's like conspiratorial would be if you said like. Well, maybe it's the Illuminati who are behind this because what they want is to replace people with lizards or something like this. Yes. I mean, this is like just... That's what I was going to say, though. (laughs) You didn't let me finish. That was what I was going to say exactly. (laughs) Mm. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, like... uh, No, they're pretty open about it. Pretty open about the fact that, like, yes, let's let's get more people in the U.S. Like... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if they... And if, like, the Sufan... Uh, whatever it's called, institute or whatever. It's uh, I could believe that they sat down with them early on to frame this entire documentary, like because uh, mm-hmm. it really, it's really, it's right off their webpage in a lot of ways, you know. Yeah. So yeah, as you said, the whole point is in the end, which is like this footage of January six, and mm-hmm. that's and kind the, of which is seen as the culmination. Yeah. In the Proud Boys part, there was a, a funny scene when they're like on at like one of these rallies and then like the Proud Boys tell them to fuck off and like they're like media. Oh, back. yeah. That's and this good. is supposedly also a sign that like, you know, they don't care about like values like free speech and like, you know, freedom of the press and stuff like that, which is like, yeah. honestly, I am a firm believer that those people have no place in any kind of protest because like, you know, because we do know that like those camera crews and shit do routinely share their material with police to identify people so like this idea that like the proud boys are like telling them to fuck off because they don't care about like you know democracy and then then that's yeah. like you know leading up mm-hmm. to like the january 6th thing is horseshit it's yeah you know that's like well, the one case where they're correct <laughs> yeah there's <laughs> a difference maybe between... cut that part <laughs> i mean <laughs> well i mean it is relevant maybe not cut it i mean because i mean because it's like you know it's used or it's obviously used like when if they used in this context of being against extremism this is like you know dangerous because if they promote this idea that surveillance or snitching is the same thing as free speech that's a very dangerous kind of yeah. idea so i also think that moment with the camera getting uh whatever attacked um by some proud boys just allowed them to you know it's like when uh because they knew that you know shit how, was going like, to happen, I've, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but you know, I also think, well, yes, but I think it also gives them that badge of honor, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that uh, we're also part of the... Well, it's it's whatever. so that like people can be like, you know, about Mariana to, to be like, oh, wow, she's, she's like brave a, a brave journalist, in. you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <sighs> like, they go with that British, like, former special operative in Ukraine to, like, track down that American, like, Nazi guy in Ukraine, and they, like, basically try to ambush him, you know what I yeah. mean? yeah. They're like, oh, he didn't want to talk to us. 
like, yeah, you know, like they're Great. in the car, and like the, that, like British guy's like, just like so, you know, does he doesn't know that there's a journalist coming? He's like, no. <laughs> <It's> like, well, <laughs> what the fuck do you, know? you people are idiots? Like, <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, and and it's also tense in that scene. They're in they're in Kiev on some street somewhere, and like they get this. Uh, they frame the shot so that you see it's actually quite an okay looking street, but you they frame the shot so that you can see some rubble, kind of like some it looks like some street construction from the road or whatever, kind of packed off to the side. So you get this like image it's with this music in the background as they like are whispering in the car like, okay, you guys stay here. Like we're going to go, you know, yeah. and they like they get out of the car and they, they start hurriedly walking towards where they're going with the music blast in the background. But as, as much as they're trying to keep up this like I'm in a dangerous war zone theme, there's like a kid fucking like riding his bike around and shorts having a great time. You know, there's like neighbors <laughs> chatting like it's just a normal fucking street. You yeah, know? it's really uh, my God. It's really the whole. The whole thing is just... I went to Eastern Europe. Scary. All, please, every journalist should watch this as, like, just what not to do ever. This is the worst fucking way to cover these people. Yeah. But, I mean, unfortunately, it's not unusual. Like, most no. most yeah, of these documentaries are very similar to this. Maybe this is, like, a bit worse than, an, uh, like, an average one, but they all have these elements. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, right. I mean, politically, ideologically, it's very similar to any of these kinds of documentaries most of them don't fucking interview mason yeah yeah <laughs> most people at least know yeah. better than that you know what i mean but a lot of a lot of them do like there is like yeah. at least i don't know three or four or five interviews with mason done by these kinds of like legitimate mainstream people mm -hmm. yeah like oh, what's sake. like what's the point of that oh <laughs> it's not promoted <laughs> it was that did you want an answer <laughs> i don't have one i mean to promote fascism that's yeah. that's the point of that yeah well you have okay to show I, both I sides like... okay right yes yes <laughs> very objective this journalism well I, okay i feel a little better got out my system and waiting to like fucking shit on this thing yeah for uh about a week now yeah i mean i i feel like catharsis. i'm gonna keep coming back to it somehow and like throughout the day and get angry again <laughs> just <laughs> yes get rage attacks yeah i feel you yeah i feel you so uh or you know i can't wait to see see it on you know rondo's fucking telegram oh my god really it's really no, it's, it's like not a, up already I and mean, it looked it's a late while. christmas gift to the fucking neo-nazi movement thank you nat geo yeah Way i mean to go if you're like you you think of yourself if not as an anti-fascist but at least a non-fascist and you produce things that are like really widely shared by nazis like then it's eh? probably like a bad sign. Like yeah. if they like how they're portrayed, this is like not a good sign. Not a good sign. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like if you like our podcasts are, are our episodes like are not on the on the on the on nine uh, order of nine angles list of podcasts about order of nine angles. They're not on that list. I really you like get that. on different lists. <laughs> yes. You get on lists of anti fascist bigots yeah. and they uh, actually have a list Jap of Japists. podcasts about them and we are not there. And I think that's a good uh -huh. sign. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because so. we dehumanize them in my yes, words. Yes. And I, and I, yes, sure. <laughs> I mean well, we actually like, rehumanize them. I think we them, have a, like a more correct like uh, portrayal of what they are. Like we mentioned the mm -hmm. like the child molestation pedophilia oh yeah no pedophilia stuff. anywhere in this yeah, so. not one mention of like the mm. rampant pedophilia and like when they show adam often do you remember what they say about them they say like uh, uh this uh foiled attack on the florida mm. nuclear plant but they don't mention that like what a week before that two weeks before that um they were fucking murdering each other over bullshit you know and uh yeah. like yeah they, they say they're story, you know? they say they are connected with five murders. They don't say like who exactly. They, they, they were like most of that were them yeah, killing yeah. each other. I mean, not all. All you of know them. what they could have done? Mm. They could have played up the ISIS connection. Yeah, you know, they could have done that. Even they're just they're just oh they're fucking lazy and they have one very simple narrative, which is that um, give give please the FBI all the power that it wants, mm. yes. <laughs> and that's it. And That's private security companies. And private security companies, They're doing companies, a good yes. job. Yeah. Intelligent sharing, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. So fuck these guys. Um, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Don't think I'm going to be watching any more of her uh, 
documentaries of traffic anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that there was some Reddit discussion going on about whether or not she was real, like the show was a real show or if it was staged, you know? Yeah. I think it does ride that line, though. I mean, yeah, with the fair with Rondo shit, it definitely does. It, it is. I mean, Absolutely. in what way would... What is it? How would you differentiate between real and stage? I don't. I, I mean, think they meant are these people actors? Uh, uh, the the interviewees. Uh, oh, they, yeah. yeah, they're not. But um, I mean, I mean, James they Mason may as well be. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like you know, it's an improv show when you really know each other, you know, and you mm. can really vibe with each other. You can just improv and get the lines you want. So. I mean, it was obviously staged. Like. Yeah. 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 And yes. they are real. Yes. yes. Mm. There you go. All right. All right. So that's that. Um, we'll be back with uh, what's coming. What's coming up next? Uh, aliens. Aliens. Oh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's a good reason to become a patron if you're not already. Yep. We're looking into, we're finally cracking the X-Files on, uh, on Patreon in our next app and looking into um, well, a few things. It's, I'm not sure what the scope is yet because it's a massive fucking topic. <laughs> so, uh, but it's going to be fun. And we'll hopefully see you there. There will be, like, Nazis and UFOs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you're already paying for some stupid fucking National Geographic subscription or something like that, just stop that and pay us. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, later. Cool. Bye. 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 Fritz here from The Empire Never Ended. This has been one of our weekly free episodes for free people. But for premium people, we also have weekly premium episodes, which you can get at patreon.com slash tenepod, T-E-N-E-P-O-D. And also follow our various social media things in the, in the show description there. Like and subscribe them. Follow them. Like and sub- follow and subscribe. Follow them. Do it.